let's turn our attention to the league in general. I want, you, I want your top three takeaways from the basketball season that has now ended and now we look forward to next year. Well, that's a nice segue, Mike, because the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with Caleb Swanigan. Mike, this guy has had a season, one of the best seasons this conference has seen easily in the last decade and maybe more. The previous graphic showed he had 28 double-doubles. He's an elite company. Jerry Lucas, one of the 50 best players of all time, had three consecutive seasons where he put up 26 or more double-doubles. Now granted, Swanigan hasn't been able to do that over three years, but his season this year, I think this was remarkable. And I think you could also make a very strong case, in addition to him being deservedly in the running, for player of the year, which ultimately in a lot of cases went to Frank Mason III, you can make a case that Caleb Swanigan was the most improved player in the country this year, not just with what he did tangibly, but the fact that he put his team on his back and everything that they wanted him to improve upon, he did just that. And you think of the expectations that were there for him. Oh, remarkable. It was supposed to be a much better year, and it was a much better year, but that brings us to our second Big Ten takeaway for you, and it's about expectations. Yeah, there are a couple of teams that are going to have expectations to fulfill that they didn't have coming in to the 2016-2017 season are going to be in the form of the Minnesota Golden Gophers and the Northwestern Wildcats. Mike, this is a team in Minnesota that won eight, count them, eight games prior to this year. They won 24 this year. They lead the conference in field goal percentage defense. They lead the conference in three-point percentage defense. You're going to return the Defensive Player of the Year in Reggie Lynch, a member of the all-conference freshman team in Amir Coffey, and also Nate Mason will return for his senior season as a first-team all-conference performer. Northwestern also following up an outstanding season expectations will be deservedly high in Evanston because you're going to return nine of your top uh, ten rotational players. They're going to miss Sanjay Lumpkin, but when you have Bryant McIntosh, Vic Law, and Scotty Lindsay returning, regardless of where you play, whether it's going to be in a neutral site as they will at the Allstate Arena, that is a program on the upswing, and they're not going to sneak up on anybody. Right. Aaron Falzone, back Correct. healthy. This, this could be a really good roster. And, and by the way, if you, all those super early, way too early top 25 uh, articles that have come out for next year, both these teams are in them. Northwestern is in every one I've seen. Minnesota's in the top 15 in a couple of them. So that's going to be interesting to see how they handle something new like that. The third point you have is about handling losses how so well wisconsin this is a team that is going to lose four senior starters mike that's not something that you see much not just in the big 10 but nationally it'll be interesting to see how they replace some of the stalwarts that have been such a big part of their success now success has continued even during coaching changes going from coach bo ryan to greg guard but four guys that are moving on bronson Canning, one of the best clutch players we've seen in the league in recent memory nigel hayes very very versatile vito brown had a nice role there in madison i I think a guy they're going to miss as much as anybody is Zach Showalter, a member of the all-defensive team. A lot of new places, or not a lot of new pieces, rather, are going to have to go around Ethan Happ, and his role will change a lot as well. There are periods of time this year they couldn't keep him on the floor because of his poor foul shooting. He will need to improve upon that in order to be on the floor. They're going to need him on the floor as much as possible. He's an all-conference performer. He'll need to perform that, especially with these guys moving on. It'll be a fascinating dynamic to see how that offense works when there is no Hayes, when there is no Koenig around there, and he's the clear focal point. How do they work things in a good way and a bad way? I mean, he'll, he'll get more opportunities. He'll probably get double-teamed even oh, more than we saw this past year Instincts as well. lead me to believe if uh, past performance is any indicator, Wisconsin's going to be just fine. That's this, true. This is going to be a team that every year, you know, when they lost Kaminsky and Decker and those guys after they went to the Final Four in a couple of consecutive years, people were wondering. They just continue to find ways to win. Their number of consecutive finishes in the top four in this league is as important as any uh, record that's out there right now. Right, and they always find the guys. Koenig wasn't a five-star recruit. No. He wasn't a top-tier guy, but he developed into that. This ain't astronomy. Over you know, you, you, right? It's a simple game. It's a simple game, Mike. People try to make it hard. And it's a simple task you had. Sean Moore.